Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and in this lesson I'll be showing you how to work with CSS backgrounds. So you can see I've got an HTML file open and it's got quite a bit of text on it. Several paragraphs of just placeholder text. Um, this placeholder text um, is quite famous, it's lorem ipsum. If you haven't heard of it, you can actually just download it from the lorem ipsum website. So if I do a live preview, you'll see what it looks like. So it's just a whole bunch of paragraphs with the heading. So I'll just quickly take you to um, a website where you can get some lorem ipsum text. It's lipsum.com. And you can just tell it how many paragraphs you want to generate. And it will actually go and generate all that for you. you just copy and paste it into your document. Okay, so let's go to W3 Schools. I want to have a look at the CSS reference and show you the section on backgrounds and borders. Basically all the CSS properties that begin with the word background are what we're going to be looking at. Specifically the version 1 properties. So you've already seen background-color. We're going to now look at background-image and we use this to add an image onto the page. So I'm going to switch over to my code. You'll see I'm linking to a backgrounds.css file and I'm just going to a, create a body selector to assign a background-image to the body selector. Now it doesn't have to be a body selector, you could do it on a smaller container somewhere in the document, but just for the purposes of demonstration I'm going to use the body selector. So you just go colon, then we say URL and we open round brackets and then we just put a link to our picture that we want to include. So I'm going to choose American.jpg and save that. So now if we switch back on over to the HTML, you'll see it doesn't look particularly good because it is gone and tiled the background. It's repeating the background over and over again. Now depending on what size background you use will depend on how much it repeats. So if I choose a larger background, you'll see that it looks a bit better. It's still tiling the background, but it's not as bad. So you would probably want to go for a relatively large background image. What we can also do though is we can control the amount of repetition involved with the background. So you'll see there's another property known as background-repeat. And that can be set to a couple of different settings. It can be set to repeat, which is the default. It can be set to just repeat-x, which would only repeat over the x-axis. Repeat-y, which would only repeat over the y-axis. And no repeat, which is my favorite one, which will not repeat at all. So let's try some of these and see what they do. I'm just going to switch on the live preview so we can see while we change the document. I'm going to go with my previous background image because it's a bit smaller. And now you'll see we're going to add a background dash repeat and I'll say repeat dash x. Now you see it's only repeating over the x axis. If I say repeat dash y, it's only repeating over the y-axis. And if I say no dash repeat, it doesn't repeat at all, just has one instance of that background image. Okay, the next uh, property that we're going to look at is the ability to position the background. And we use background dash position to set the position of the background. By default, the background occurs in the top left-hand corner of the browser. But we can change that position in a couple of different ways. Firstly, we can use a combination of these values to position the background in nine possible positions. So let's try one of these. So let's say background, or let's actually do this while we watch background dash 
position and I'll say bottom right. I guess maybe, yeah, there we go. Now it appears in the bottom right of the document. Um, I could also say bottom left or bottom center. Um, I could say center center, which puts it right in the middle. So nine different positions where you can put the background using this method. Uh, a better way of doing it would be to actually specify an X and Y coordinate in um, either in pixels or whichever unit of measurement you want to use. Could be in M's as well. So let me do that. So it's the X coordinate first and it's the Y coordinate second. So let's say we say 100 pixels. 100 pixels. So it's 100 pixels from the left, that's the X coordinate. And it's 100 pixels from the top, that's the Y coordinate. Now at school you would have learned that the Y, the y axis starts at 0 at the bottom. Whereas on a computer monitor the Y axis is always inverted. So just remember that. That's why it's 100 pixels from the bottom. So let's change some of these numbers just so you can see what happens. Um, there I'm changing the... Um, the Y and here I'm changing the X so next up you'll notice that if you scroll the browser the background moves with the document we have another CSS property called background dash position uh, not position background dash um, attachment and this can be set to fixed or scroll scroll is the default um, I'm gonna go for the fixed option so now when I scroll the background stays stationary while the textual content moves on top of it. So that's quite a nice effect that you can use. And of course we can also set the background color which you learned about earlier. So we can have both a background image and a background color at the same time. Now the shorthand for this is quite nice. The shorthand you'll find also in W3 schools, just the word background. The shorthand allows you to specify these properties in any order you wish. So let me try comment this out. And then I'm going to use the shorthand to replace everything I just did above. So I'll start with the URL. Remember the order does not matter. Okay, and I've got exactly the same effect, but now using the shorthand, which is one line of code, as opposed to several lines of code. So that brings us to the end of working with backgrounds in CSS.